Take the girl. Protect her. And bring her back unharmed. At the start, she's very... She's got a lot of curiosity and a lot of drive and she wants to be involved, but she has this beautiful kind of innocence to her and naivety. And then when she's thrown into this world that's very brutal and new to her and she discovers so much and she experiences so much and she sees so many horrific things, you begin to see her build a little bit of a harder shell and she becomes a little bit colder because she almost has to uh, kind of detach herself from the things she's feeling because otherwise she would just collapse and I think she's begun to realize that she has to become more independent and that she can only really trust herself in the world and so she you do see her become a little more cold and you definitely see a kind of darkness beginning to grow in her. My source of information was the novels and you know we worked at such a pace there wasn't much rehearsal time you just had to trust your instinct and the way you empathized with the character in the situation and, and other than that I just had a lot of conversations with the director and Lauren and each member of the cast who I was working with at that point to, to you know, try and bring the best version of, of Yennefer's truth to the screen. There are many women that I, I look to anyway in this career which have very strong attributes which, which Yennefer um, owns. You know, Viola Davis, Helen Bonham Carter, Anne-Marie Duff, there's so many, there's so many actresses. <laughs> that I adore out there, so many of my friends that are incredible um, women and not, not, just, not just actresses actually, like a lot of the women in my life that, um, that I look to, that I look up to. Yeah, I think naturally as human beings we absorb a lot from, That's it, absorb. from, from the, the people, the experiences around us mm. in our in you know in our real lives and that's what allows us to empathize with characters that we're playing and allow us to get into somebody else's kind of body is what we take from exactly. everybody else around us so it's kind of something that happens without you consciously going what am i looking to inspire me no matter what you choose you'll come out bloody i mean growing up i um loved harry potter I'm the same. And I was also kind of totally obsessed with school. <laughs> like, and that was just what I loved, so I kind of really related to um, her character in Harry Potter. And she also went to my school, the actress, Emma Watson. Oh, really? Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Mine would be Harry Potter as well. Um, that's something that I loved as a child. Uh, I, I've I taken I the Pottermore. I'm, I'm Gryffindor. I want to be Ravenclaw. Do you? Yeah. That's interesting. I don't know, I, I just wanted to be Gryffindor. And I was. And I did the test. But that was when I was a lot older, actually. Probably like in sixth form or something, I did the test. It wasn't actually when I loved it. You'd be in Slytherin. I know I would. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I think she'd be a Gryffindor. No, she would not. She'd definitely be That's Slytherin. That's a joke. She's it's like not. I'm sorry, I know it's your character, but she's not no, a Gryffindor. I want her to be Gryffindor. A serious but Gryffindor. She would be. Serious Gryffindor. She'd be Sly Slytherin. You definitely be Hufflepuff. Siri, are you? Are you actually <laughs> having a laugh? Siri is not Hufflepuff. She, 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 she'd be Gryffindor. She would be Gryffindor. She's like the epitome of Gryffindor. Just Courageous. I'm sorry. Geralt would be um, a Ravenclaw. I don't actually know them off by heart. I'm just getting a Ravenclaw, Ravenclaw. vibe off him. Or Slytherin. He's not going to be Hufflepuff. Let's He'd face it. He'd be on the border between Gryffindor and Slytherin, I think. Yeah, he'd be a Harry Potter, a bit of a Harry Potter. Yeah, he would. Yeah. Yeah, I know this is... <laughs>